you're looking at buying one of the, the earlier Hiluxes, you might want to watch this video because in all the years dealing with them, here's some things to look out for. So you're looking at buying a Toyota Hilux, primarily the, what, the KUN26 around there. So anything from, I think they went from 2004 all the way up to, I think they went to about 2011, 2012 maybe. And then they revised it and then they did, they did variations the whole, the whole way through. But all right, starting off, things to look out for with this particular Hilux, especially with 1KD in it. Uh, the petrol ones, the V6 ones, they were pretty much bulletproof. They were a little bit heavy on juice, but they were bulletproof. They had coil pack issues, things along those lines, but they weren't too bad. However, going to the diesel 1KD, oh man, where do I start? So they had a problem with injectors and injector seats. The injector seats would leak, therefore allowing carbon to bypass and go into the oil. Once they got into the oil, it would gather in the sump and then block the sump pickup. Once that was done, you know where this goes, bang, loss of oil pressure. Most, most people that had this issue, it was like a flicker of the oil light and bang, that was it. The car just started running rough and it's cracked a piston or scored a bore. So that was a big, big problem. Another big problem they had was cracking pistons in general. They would just crack a piston for no reason at all. They would be driving down the road and then people say they've lost power, crack the piston, that's it, throw away motor or rebuild the motor, start again. And uh, yes, so they, they did have a lot of issues with that. Other issues with them were diffs. Doing the diffs in them was like crazy. They would blow rear diffs, they blow front diffs. I don't know what toy had to design these diffs with, but diff problems. They didn't really have axle bearing issues. They normally had the seals. So axle bearing seals would go in them. And you also had the crown wheel and pinion. They would just destroy crown wheel and pinions and also the LSD in the back. But that was a big problem. I think a lot of the issue was people put the big tires on them. They jacked them up and they worked them a lot harder. So therefore, it did cause the diffs to go. However, diffs were a big, big problem with the Hiluxes. Another problem was airbag lights. Airbag lights on Hiluxes was just, I don't know what it was, but the airbags and the, the squib, so in other words, the clock spring, that had, it was almost as bad as the Commodores because the Commodores always had that airbag voltage high or whatever with the clock spring in the steering wheel. So we, we replaced countless amounts of those. Hiluxes just had that issue as well as window regs in Hiluxes. They would go like no tomorrow. And CV joints in the front. CV joints in the front was, they would blow CVs like crazy. But again, I think that was more down to, you know, the owner and giving the car a little bit of a hard time off road. Another big, big issue the Toyota Hilux had was the suction control valves. They would go in them all the time. They're the little valves that sit on the back of the pump. So you had two of them. And if they weren't reading correctly, you would have a loss of power. You'd get pinging. You'd get all sorts of stuff. So the, the old typical engine knock, that was a big problem with them. Suction control valves, you replace them out and boom, away you go. Other than that, Apart from the injector issues themselves, injectors would go in them, but you get that real clack to them. They have a real Hilux knock or clack. It sounds like a little ball bearing rattling around in the engine when you're accelerating and it gets louder and louder the harder you accelerate. That was a big problem with them too. Other than that, they weren't too bad. They would clag up. They did have an, a real bad issue with intakes clogging up, but that is, uh, common rail diesels in a nutshell. So yes, if you're looking at purchasing a Hilux, these are some of the things to look out for. Other than that, they are a really good vehicle. They're a solid vehicle, but they're not as unbreakable as what people tout them to be. So they did have issues. The newer ones, so the, the current ones, they've got DPS, DPF issues like crazy. Toyota are still rectifying that and they're going through a lawsuit at the moment because of the DPF issues. But yes, the newer ones, I wouldn't really recommend going and getting one unless you've got the DPF issue nutted out. 
However, the, the earlier ones, yeah, they're, they're bulletproof to a point, but they can have these issues. And a lot of them, they're getting up there in Ks. So you're taking your, your fate in your own hands, so to speak, if you're um, going to purchase one of those.